This experiment requires the use of a couple dangerous chemicals. Proper safety equipment should be worn at all times. The briggs rauscher reaction is one of the very few known oscillating chemical reactions. It is a very good demonstration reaction as it has quite striking color changes. For this experiment, we need to make three different solutions. Solution A will consist of 43 grams of potassium iodate and 4.5 milliliters of concentrated sulfuric acid. For solution B, we will need 15.6 grams of malonic acid or it can be substituted with 11 milliliters of acetone. We will also need 3.4 grams of manganese sulfate monohydrate as well as 4 grams of soluble starch. Solution C is the easiest to make and we will only need 400 milliliters of 30% hydrogen peroxide for it. I am now going to make the solutions in order starting with A. First add 800 milliliters of water to an appropriate container. Followed by 43 grams of potassium iodate. Stir the solution until almost all of the potassium iodate has dissolved. Next, add 4.5 milliliters of concentrated sulfuric acid. Stir until everything is completely dissolved and then top it off to 1 liter. The total volume does not need to be exact, but try to get it as close to 1 liter as possible. Transfer the solution to an appropriate container labeled A. We will put solution A aside for now and move on to making solution B. First, add 4 grams of soluble starch to a beaker. Next, add a small amount of water to the beaker and swirl the water around to wet all of the starch. Next, add about 200 milliliters of boiling hot water. After boiling the starch solution for a few minutes, it should start to clear up. To a large container, add about 700 mils of water. Followed by 3.4 grams of manganese sulfate monohydrate and then 15.6 grams of malonic acid. Then the starch solution that we prepared is added. You might notice that it's a little bit cloudy, but that's okay. Top this all off to one liter by adding about 100 milliliters of water. You'll notice that the solution is still a little bit cloudy, but you shouldn't be concerned about this. Add the solution to an appropriate container labeled B. Now put the solution aside and we'll move on to making the last and easiest one. First, add 400 milliliters of 30% hydrogen peroxide. Top this off to 1 liter using about 600 milliliters of water. Mix it thoroughly and then add it to a container labeled C. Now that all the solutions have been made, we are ready to move on to the demonstration. First, add equal amounts of solution A and solution B to a beaker. In my case, I opted to use 300 milliliters of each. The solution must be stirred very strongly so that a large vortex appears. Next, 300 milliliters of solution C was added to the mixture. The amounts of each solution added must all be equal. There are many reactions going on at the same time, but I'm going to try to simplify it as best I can. However, it still might be quite confusing. I'll start with a quick summary of what I think you should remember before delving into a little more detail. In this experiment, there are two main reactions, one that generates iodine and one that depletes iodine. At the very beginning, the reaction that produces iodine dominates, which is why the solution turns yellow. Then the iodine complexes with starch to form a dark blue-black complex. The iodine then cuts off its own production and the reaction that depletes iodine takes over. The iodine is used up, so the iodine starch complex dissociates and the solution reverts back to a clear color. And now for a little more detail. The color changes in this reaction are basically due to a battle between two different processes. One process is a radical based process, while the other one is a non-radical based one. Even though the collections of reactions that comprise each process are very different, they both have the same overall reaction as shown in equation 1. To avoid confusion, I've underlined several key molecules. Iodate is underlined in blue, hypoiodous acid is underlined in red, and malonic acid is underlined in green. There are a couple major characteristics about each process. Firstly, the radical process produces hypoiodous acid very quickly, but it functions at low iodide concentrations. On the other hand, the non-radical process produces the hypoiodous acid at a much slower rate and it functions at high iodide concentrations. 
For the purpose of this explanation, the beginning of the cycle will be referred to when the solution is clear. When the solution is clear, this means that there is very low iodine and or iodide present in the solution and the radical process will dominate. As mentioned before, the radical process produces hypoiodous acid very quickly and it will produce it much quicker than it can react with the malonic acid. This rapid rate of production of hypoiodous acid leads to an excess of it in solution. The excess hypoiodous acid then reacts with hydrogen peroxide to form the iodide ion as shown in equation 5, underlined in purple. Then, as shown in equation 3, this iodide ion will react with hypoiodous acid to produce iodine. In solution, iodine has a yellow color, so as its concentration builds up, the solution becomes darker and darker yellow. Eventually, a threshold concentration of iodide will be reached. At this point, iodine and iodide molecules will combine together with starch to form a complex. The formation of the blue-black starch complex marks the end of the first half of the cycle and the end of the radical process. I'll quickly explain why the radical process ends. Near the end of the radical process, the concentration of iodide in solution is very high. The iodide reacts with iodous acid, which is an extremely important reactant for perpetuating the radical process. This means that if the concentration of iodide is high enough, it can effectively shut down its own production, which is exactly what it does. Now that the radical process is shut down, the non-radical one will take over. In the non-radical process, the iodide ion reacts with the iodate ion to ultimately form hypoiodous acid. However, as I said before, this process is quite slow and the hypoiodous acid is consumed by malonic acid as fast as it is produced. Because there is not an excess of hypoiodous acid produced, we cannot regenerate the iodide ion like we did before as shown in equation 5. Because of this, the concentration of iodide in solution starts to decrease. The decrease in iodide concentration causes the starch complex to break apart. As more and more starch complex breaks apart, the solution goes from a very dark black color and slowly changes to blue. Eventually the solution will clear up and the concentration of iodide is extremely low. This marks the end of the non-radical process and at this point the entire cycle will continue again. However, the duration of each cycle decreases as the reaction continues. Eventually, once the reaction is complete, it will remain a solid black. I hope that explanation makes sense, but honestly, it is quite complicated, so do not be concerned if you are confused. If you would like to read more about this reaction, I'll provide a link below where I got all of my information about the mechanism of the reaction.